مرحبا Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Allow me first to introduce you to the place that we are meeting tonight. It is a cafe called Ram that has been established by Syrian refugees, um, similarly to some of us uh, and similar to the topic that we'll be discussing tonight. Um, we have wanted to start and to initiate um, our first dialogue in a place similar to Ram in view of the Syrian culture that is still living and that is still vivid in this place. Only a few months ago, and um, when they first started um, this place, um, we have been uh, gathering here, and whenever we come, we would meet um, Syrians and Lebanese uh, gathering around um, intellectual matters. And um, today's uh, debate is actually part of a series of debates and presentations that will uh, take place um, during the coming year and that are organized under the project name Syrian Culture in Times of Conflict. My name is Wim Maghribi and I am the director of SHARK, which is an NGO founded 10 years ago and uh, that has been working in uh, Lebanon for the advancement and enhancing of um, culture in the Middle East and Arab countries. The project that is titled Syrian Culture in Times of Conflict is funded by the Swedish Institute. And um, it's a partnership between Shark and, and uh, the Swedish journalist Alexander Sandals, who will now introduce us briefly to the relationship and to the history of the relationship between Sweden and Syria before we move on to uh, our discussion with our panelists. Hello. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Many thanks for coming and um, for being uh, with us tonight. My name is Alexandra Sandals, and I'm a Swedish journalist. So my name is Alexandra uh, Sandals, and I'm a Swedish journalist covering the Middle East. I'm currently um, living um, in Stockholm or between Stockholm and Beirut, um, but I have spent in Beirut the last uh, six years. Um, let me brief you about the Syrian society in Sweden. The Syrians in Sweden have a long history. They have started coming um, to uh, Sweden in the 50s and 60s, um, and um, some of us, um, as um, Swedish, um, who have uh, Syrian origins, have uh, grew up um, with Syrians in school, such uh, for example, one of my dearest friends in school, um, for example, was Syrian. And now, at this moment, and in view of the many Syrian refugees uh, coming to Sweden, you can hear the Syrian dialects everywhere. You can uh, hear them uh, in down the streets, in schools, at work, everywhere. And uh, they are even um, our neighbors in cities, um, in the suburbs of the cities, um, and on the countryside. And now, with the um, new developments, the um, Swedish are now more interested in, in, uh, being, uh, in being more involved in the culture and heritage um, from uh, Sweden. We are honored and we are very pleased um, to have uh, with us uh, tonight um, Mr. Samir Fazah, Mr. Hannibal Saad, and Mrs. Hanan Hajhali, who will lead tonight's discussion. Mr. Samir Fazah is the owner of the Kozah Gallery in Damascus, which was founded in 1994. And he's as well um, the organizer of many exhibitions um, that um, introduce many Syrian artists. And he has held those exhibitions inside and outside Syria. And uh, despite uh, the current circumstances, he, is still, uh, he's, uh, he remains very active um, in his undertaking. Among uh, his undertakings is uh, the Last Supper exhibition, which um, showcased um, 55 Syrian artists in Beirut. Mr. Hannibal Saad is a musician, and he is um, a music promoter who organizes festivals. We would uh, in uh, Damascus um, be um, very interested in attending um, the uh, festival Jazz Lives in, uh, lives in Syria. And um, after that, he moved his work to Beirut and to Holland, where he uh, currently lives. 
I'm here as well with us, Mrs. Hanan Hajani, who is an, an actor, a trainer, and a researcher from Lebanon. She lived and she has worked in Lebanon throughout the Civil War, and she continues to be a very strong cultural activist in the country. Of course, um, she has a very serious background in um, theater. Among the books, she has written and edited a book that represents uh, the history of Lebanese theater and another one on the cultural policy in the Arab world. So thank you all of us for joining us today. And uh, maybe we can start our debate by um, with a very brief introduction. Maybe um, each one of you could briefly present your initial thoughts on the topic of culture in times of conflict. Um, Mr. Sama, maybe you can uh, have our discussion. Thank you. I can share with you my own experience. When the um, crisis uh, started in Syria three years ago, we could, um, of course, um, be aware of the problem um, uh, of the problems that will be take place, whether or not we'll have production, whether or not um, uh, we will continue within the same line of thinking. Or we would wonder whether or not um, Syrian culture and art will uh, fall back similarly to other Arab countries, uh, and where would um, artists stand in the current circumstances? The first reaction was that we should work and as you all know, art is actually an act of creation and it's as well a matter of promotion and marketing. And, and uh, since um, I work on the promotion of art, uh, then I shall uh, continue working with the promotion of um, uh, artworks uh, so that artists could continue producing um, creations and um, artworks. Therefore, I had um, many exhibitions. I uh, continued working um, uh, in uh, Damascus for a long period of time. Uh, we had exhibitions in Syria, and then we had to stop. We moved to another uh, exhibition that was uh, devoted uh, mainly to young persons. It was a five-year exhibition held in Damascus that would um, highlight uh, the activities that we were undertaking. Um, we sent um, our um, work uh, to um, all countries and uh, to all our clients. And we shared with them um, uh, the data that I have uh, been working on for the past 20 years. I was uh, capable of promoting this work in uh, Singapore and in many other countries. This is why I felt that despite uh, the circumstances, despite uh, this very difficult crisis uh, that reached a peak um, in uh, 2012 and 2013, we could still continue our production and we could still maintain our activity. Uh, after 2012, and at the end of 2012, it was uh, it has become very difficult uh, to start um, uh, promoting um, and uh, to start producing um, from within uh, Syria. This is why I had to move to Beirut. Um, uh, of course, um, in Beirut, uh, many other artists uh, had come before, and they were already settled in Beirut. And I personally believe that it's very important to always uh, keep. Um, the move uh, going and to always uh, keep doors open and always to find uh, um, places where we could hold our exhibitions. Uh, and um, Syrian artists, as we know them, are producers and uh, of course have many productions and they continue developing and in view of the activities and in view of the um, innovations um, Syrians could still find uh, new ways uh, to express themselves. This is of course uh, to be very brief um, and then maybe we can open the floor for discussion. Thank you Mr. Anibal. My name is Anibal Saad. I had uh, the Jazz um, Lives Festival in uh, 2011 in uh, Syria. So I uh, have started uh, the festivals um, simply um, in order to promote music in, in Syria and to have uh, Syrian artists um, have their place uh, in Syria. This is why I call it the space uh, for um, music. And uh, the uh, festival, um, the jazz festival, was the most um, known um, festival. However, I was working, of course, on promoting um, other types of um, festivals in order to make um, 
our Syrian culture and our Syrian music um, be well known and um, gain reputation. This is why we had many persons uh, come and uh, our and of course, uh, during the Omeyyad and the Abbasid um, areas, um, we had a very interesting culture that uh, unfortunately fainted away because of the wars that, that have uh, taken place in Syria. Following uh, the events, I have decided uh, to continue. I didn't uh, know what uh, the answer would be. This is why I moved um, uh, to um, the Netherlands um, and I organized the three festivals in coordination with uh, Rotterdam, Amsterdam, and Leiden universities. And um, in terms of jazz, I tried uh, to have as much as possible interaction action because the musicians um, the musicians that we have worked with uh, were only 50 um, artists um, uh, they are everywhere in the world this is why I have found that internet was the solution and Beirut um, would be the main hub because we have the largest number of artists all those persons who were um, who were involved in the festival could as well be present and this is what I wanted to ask you today because I do not feel like uh, talking I would like uh, to know what you think um, of I have uh, talked um, with Hannah and she asked me whether or not I was having uh, interaction or whether it was a uh, live broadcasting using um, we uh, do not have um, any possibility we didn't have we didn't stand the chance we uh, needed uh, to find um, uh, a solution by means of Skype by means of uh, streaming and uh, this is why we had an experience um, um, in April and we had as well another one in uh, The Hague um, in the Netherlands and uh, we tried to have as much as possible communication and interaction between many um, many bands and of course this interaction will expand even more and we will continue within the same line of thinking thank you very much Good evening. At the outset, allow me to say that we speak a lot and we hear a lot about Syrian refugees and about the number of Syrian refugees who are constituting a burden for the economy and for um, the society, especially in the Lebanese state. Nevertheless, we hear many talk about the problems, we hear uh, many talk about the epidemies, but uh, nevertheless, I would like to uh, start the discussion from different perspective um, and uh, to shed the light on the importance of the Syrian presence which has activated not only the um, uh, cultural space or the art space um, in uh, Lebanon which has suffered from a consequent uh, from a consequent walls um, and that has suffered from many problems um, uh, so not only did it contribute to enriching um, this um, space, but it has as well promoted and um, it was actually an impetus that has led many into thinking about the new ways of working, the Syrian presence, despite, um, the, despite its difficulties and in, uh, in view of its um, wealth, could has uh, led us into uh, thinking about how to build bridges and how to increase uh, our working together and uh, to enhance our uh, common uh, common lines of thinking and uh, of course maybe we can go a bit um, higher in our means of discussion in terms of talking about art only about art about production uh, in uh, culture we have uh, producers and we have the public and of course we have the product usually we deal with art as a product um, a product that is supposed to be uh, very sophisticated um, and to be uh, produced uh, by means of a specific means and uh, to have um, a specific um, art elements it uh, needs to know um, to whom it should address it is supposed to have objectives and uh, to um, initiate better lines of thinking and promotion but maybe we can move this production into the public into the grassroots when the Syrians and um, um, during a six month of uh, demonstrations since March 2011 if I'm not mistaken and uh, for a period of six months was capable of uh, um, transforming houses public spaces hearts and minds and was capable of forcing the media to to um, 
understand, to grasp the move of the grassroots and to have better creations and uh, to better interact with those innovations that are spontaneous or those uh, that are um, uh, better crafted in terms of dances, in terms of um, uh, football uh, players, uh, those who have become the main spokesperson for the grassroots, for the people, those official grassroots uh, who are speaking on behalf of the Serbian revolution and when every person uses his or her mobile and becomes um, the witness um, and behind his mobile is he's not only taking selfies and pictures but he is as well taking pictures of the persons um, who stand um, before him and he uses those pictures in order to have them be broadcasted by means of many uh, channels though he could um, uh, he could be uh, become the victim of those same pictures uh, that impose themselves on all official and public uh, uh, channels and uh, this uh, picture that is a shaky picture this uh, blurred uh, picture becomes the judge um, this picture this image um, that is uh, uh, the, the um, author of which is anonymous um, is bec becomes the property of many those persons who become the mind and the conscience of many persons in such situations and in view of the presence of, of hundreds and millions of refugees of millions of persons who are present um, in um, camps um, that uh, contain uh, first, second, third, and fourth uh, categories of refugees. And in view of uh, the fact that we have children who are deprived um, from schooling for the third consecutive years. And now if you go ask mothers um, who are in refugee camps and you ask them what do you need before they say we need blankets, we need food, we need heating, they say we want our children to go back to school. And when you start working with them on the grounds, you start um, with them in terms of um, cultural rescue. You provide them with elements that are very important in terms of uh, medical care, medical assistance. Um, and this is why we are trying to work um, on culture that has become a very organic element uh, that is combining um, a series of activities that are undertaken. And um, we believe that it is very important uh, to have this art become an art that is the property of many persons. We could enable many persons to understand um, the alphabet of art, uh, the basics of art, um, um, and um, to bear witness uh, to what I'm saying is when we had uh, the interactive um, uh, theater experience in cooperation with many observatories and when we have uh, a cultural um, um, cultural elements who are contributing and when we have of course a network that we can of course um, develop furthermore during our discussion so those persons within the refugee camps those um, young persons who are unemployed were capable of starting their own uh, their own band um, and uh, to have um, as well plays um, that they are producing that they are um, that they are screening and uh, I have already uh, taken um, a part of uh, a play that I believe it should be a prototype um, or a prototype of the alternative art uh, that will no longer be um, an answer to the one news uh, way of thinking but uh, that goes um, into another way because um, cultural mediation as it was said by Andrew Bensfeld is not only based on three axes um, the uh, recipient or uh, the, uh, the producer the producing um, or the uh, grassroots but here of course we have the product and we have the producer that are the owners or that are being owned by the uh, Syrian refugees themselves now we can open the floor for debate a question you have spoken about uh, the quality you have spoken about uh, the quality of production that has improved uh, thanks to the presence of Syrians I have a question to Mr. Samer the presence of Syrians in Lebanon especially in a more or a better promotional attitude, but of course, um, so I shall repeat. Of course, maybe I can talk about uh, the quality of the Lebanese culture that has improved um, with the presence of Syrians in Lebanon. Now I would like to ask the question from a different perspective to Mr. Stamer. Is the quality of um, the Syrian art has improved or to what extent was it influenced by their presence in Lebanon, which is a country that is more of a marketing country but um, um, 
and despite the fact uh, that we have war going on in our country. So how can we talk about um, uh, the, their presence here and to what extent they have the quality of their art has been influenced? Um, you speak of the Syrian art, but you cannot um, uh, talk about the Syrian art in three years only. The Syrian art has expanded and that has uh, uh, taken um, uh, its um, current dimensions uh, since the 60s and uh, the generation of Syrian artists who are currently present in Lebanon have have um, a very rich background because they have started their work uh, back in the 60s. And this is, of course, um, um, what gives um, the Syrian art its importance. Um, not, not because I'm Syrian, but uh, everywhere you go, uh, Syrian art is broadcasted and played in all directions. Um, and we have, uh, for example, plays, we have theater, we have music, we have literature, we have poetry. It's an art uh, that is a full-fledged art. Uh, the generation of artists who have come here have come, of course, with all their backgrounds with all um, their bagage. They have come uh, to, um, uh, to um, a space uh, that is acquainted with the Syrian artist, uh, with the Syrian art. We have, of course, uh, many fans in Lebanon, and we have many persons uh, who are introduced and acquainted um, with the um, with the Syrian art and uh, those, for example, who love paintings um, have uh, paintings of uh, Syrian artists. So when the Syrian artist uh, came to Lebanon, uh, he came uh, with his uh, um, individuality, he came with his uh, capacities and he, um, and coupled with the freedom that they have in Lebanon, uh, they were capable of producing interesting um, interesting work um, and uh, Syrian artists were capable of imposing themselves. All galleries who are working now are now working with Syrian artists. We even have some galleries that have opened their doors, um, especially in order to promote Syrian art. Um, so I do not believe and I never have felt that we were negatively influenced. Um, but we had a problem that has uh, nothing to do with uh, the move, um, which is um, that recently um, and during the past uh, 10 years, um, Syrian artists are now um, actually producing uh, fast production. So uh, they are not uh, taking their time in producing uh, their, for example, um, paintings. Um, no, the, I believe that uh, the uh, Syrian Lebanese dialogue was very enriching, it was very positive, and the freedom and the media that we have here in Lebanon was very enhancing to uh, Syrian artists. And uh, moreover, the audience, um, the Lebanese audience, uh, is not um, a superficial audience. Uh, they are, um, um, they are well educated and they are capable of discussing um, pieces of art. Um, and he can see uh, those, uh, and he can distinguish between um, um, those uh, pieces of art uh, that are more elaborate and those uh, that are fast production. So the Lebanese market is now almost closed. We have uh, four million uh, Lebanese uh, in Lebanon. So I believe that the uh, Syrian. Uh, artists uh, need to go outside Lebanon. Uh, they have, of course, uh, to uh, have exhibitions outside Lebanon because uh, we have a problem in terms of supply and demand. Kindly use the microphone. To pick up on what uh, Mr. Samar said, yes, it is true, but nevertheless, we shall not um, forget one thing, not only because the uh, Syrian artists have imposed themselves um, on Lebanon, on the Lebanese society, on galleries, or uh, on buyers, um, it's because um, the situation in Syria has um, been very interesting to many. Many young persons were capable of uh, taking those elements of uh, benefiting from the circumstances, but every um, artist um, uh, has uh, to uh, take into account his own experience. I was actually observing many young artists um, uh, that I knew back in Syria, and they were trying to overview um, uh, the experience um, that they had encountered uh, during uh, the conflict in Syria. We have to go even deeper than um, simply talking about a product to be sold. We have to examine the impact of the revolution on the young Syrian artists. So we're talking about uh, marketing in Lebanon. Even the Lebanese um, have reached a point um, of, uh, of satisfaction. They are no longer in need for uh, additional pieces of work. I 
I wish uh, to ask a question to Mr. Hannibal, to Mrs. Hanan, and uh, of course be very brief in your answers before we open the floor for a debate. Question, Mr. Hannibal. Regarding the internet, how uh, was the internet beneficial to you, especially that you had um, uh, to leave um, the region in your work and in uh, producing and broadcasting Syrian music? And um, what we heard um, is that um, Syria was um, in the spotlight, which has, of course, contributed positively to uh, Syrian art. So you had many um, advantages in using uh, the internet. So festivals um, were very interactive in Lebanon, Syria, and Jordan. And uh, of course, uh, musicians uh, would um, um, move um, easily in uh, uh, Lebanon, in Syria, and in Jordan without any official contact. So in any of all three countries. This is why a Syrian um, artists who are here. And we had uh, many musicians. Um, uh, we didn't have any differentiation or any um, separation between Lebanese and Syrians. We never had that. Yesterday, for example, in June, we had around 40 Syrian musicians who were present. I benefited enormously of this interaction, of this very positive interaction. Moreover, musicians, Syrian musicians who are abroad, I'm, I'm trying to connect them uh, through the internet if I do not have enough uh, funding uh, to have them come to Lebanon or I try to uh, pull them in uh, in the Netherlands. Um, so the idea is to have as many persons be involved in interactive uh, activities or um, of course uh, all depending on the funding. Now, I would like to seize the opportunity uh, to benefit from other persons who have activities. Maybe we can uh, try to have a better connection because uh, currently we are working on the social media. So the more we are involved in broadcasting media, for example, on the social network, on uh, the Internet, um, we can uh, contribute um, to um, disseminating the main idea, which is um, uh, to have uh, the Syrian culture um, be broadcasted uh, throughout the region. Question, Mrs. Hanan. It would be an obvious question. What is the difference between the influence of the conflict on women? So, to rephrase, how does the influence um, of the conflict uh, change on uh, women? Uh, so, to what extent is the influence of the conflict different on women than it is on men? I do not know how we will read my answer, says Mrs. Hanan, but um, women are a jewel, but however, they become even brighter in times of conflicts. In wars, priorities change. For example, the largest um, percentage of marriages um, or mixed marriages between uh, many um, co confessions are in times of war. And uh, for example, my husband uh, is Maronite, and I always tell him, uh, if, it, if it weren't for war, you would have never married me. So what I'm saying is that all the potential of women are actually exploited more in times of war, be it in terms of um, holding demonstrations, in terms of food, in terms of camps, um, in terms of anything that takes place in times of war, in terms of um, um, unifying um, families, opening houses during demonstrations, the innovation, the creativity, or devising means um, of um, putting things into action. So women have uh, many capacities, and in times of war, women become even more important. I can give you examples. Um, in, the, um, in the Greek uh, tragedy, um, who are uh, well known? Is, is it Kub or uh, Achilles? Um, uh, so women are more important in terms uh, or in tragedies, much more than um, uh, their own, um, their own um, children. Be it not for Ashura, no one would have heard of uh, Sid Zainab. So if we take, of course, uh, Ashura in its mythological dimension. So simply to say, simply to say um, that women uh, brighten in times of war, but that doesn't mean that we always need war in order to have uh, women appreciated as jewels. But of course, we'd like to live in times of peace in order to see our children grow older and um, uh, to, see their, uh, to see our children and grandchildren. Of course, I bet that we have questions from participants. Yes, we um, are all ears. Question, I would like to ask about the best melody. We have many excellent um, 
music for example there is the Tanjara Dagatu which is one of the bands that I am very appreciative of and who are working endlessly they have train uh, they train four days a week um, they work um, similarly to professionals and of course um, they will have uh, success in Lebanon and abroad there are of course other bands that we can talk about but this is in general I'm a civil engineer from Syria and I am uh, the director of Al um, Al in Alay, which is. Um, and I would like to talk about uh, the uh, conditions of Syrian artists um, in Lebanon. I uh, I know part of the picture, but of course there is another side of the picture. The situation of artists is very difficult. It's not true that we have freedom in Lebanon. They come here, and uh, they have very difficult living conditions, and galleries abuse them, and they abuse their difficult conditions. It is true that many galleries have opened, but nevertheless, they are paying um, a huge tax, and they have to... Um, to shoulder a large burden in order to work with galleries in addition to the psychological problems and hurdles to their work, um, which has um, prohibited them from expressing themselves uh, uh, freely. Um, it's, um, it's a matter that needs to, um, of course, contribute to the promotion of um, Syrian art production uh, so that we can shed the light on the situation and to have artists become our only beacon of hope um, in order to protect society against uh, this disintegration and uh, this uh, sickness and disease. Um, uh, it is a simple comment. Thank you very much. This is why um, uh, there is a song uh, called Under Pressure Tahdakhd by the band uh, Tanjar Tahd. I would like to answer Mrs. Maisa. I believe uh, that a dialogue will uh, shed the light on the um, artistic value of uh, work um, of pieces of work. Of course, uh, the artistic um, value has been has gained uh, because of the um, Conflict. We have, of course, to understand uh, the importance of colors and the depth of the um, us, uh, the pieces of um, art. Uh, of course, uh, maybe I have uh, I have been engaging with them in a constant uh, discussion, and maybe I did not um, I did not uh, see uh, those differences. But what I, I send uh, the catalog of um, uh, the exhibitions uh, to um, abroad. They can smell to what extent um, colors have changed, the ambiance has changed, to what extent uh, those paintings are sad. It is true that the crisis has um, influenced negatively the spirit of those artists. And um, I do not believe that in any uh, regular circumstances um, uh, such um, works could have been produced. Um, many uh, maybe had a superficial work, um, and uh, in view of uh, their state of refugee, they have become uh, artists who go deeper into uh, their selves and uh, who go deeper into their creation and innovation. We can see colors that were never used before. We see new angles, new perceptions, new dimensions added to their pieces of work and undoubtedly this uh, Syrian creation has developed even more I can see many artists that are working and um, coming to Beirut is not a piece of cake it's not um, uh, a walk um, they are working 20 hours a day endlessly in order to survive in order to pay their needs and in order to be present on the market, I will not um, give you names, but you know those who have ha been present, those um, who have had um, many persons um, visiting them. So it's true that dimension has uh, that uh, work, that their work has gained in new dimensions. So many could actually have uh, different definitions of the word uh, refugee. Maybe you can call them a visitor, but the main idea is to know, and here I ask uh, young persons to know that every Syrian who has left um, Syria voluntarily or forced needs to use the presence uh, or to use the opportunity that he left Syria. Young persons need to learn. They have to seize this opportunity. 
Though Lebanon is only um, an hour and a half away, but um, I am one of many who would come uh, every weekend. Um, but now that I live here, I can f see things from a different perspective. But nevertheless, young persons need to seize the opportunity of living in a foreign country. Those Syrians who have gone uh, to uh, Jordan, to Sweden, to Malaysia, to uh, New Zealand, they need uh, to keep their eyes wide open because this is an opportunity for him and for her to understand. Um, unfortunately, they were forced by very sad uh, circumstances, but no matter what the circumstances are, they have to learn, and I know that they have learned. Uh, I have even noticed uh, this um, from their uh, the way they dress. Uh, Lebanon has an influence, whether um, whether they like it or not. They have even changed their looks. Um, I could see them when they came from uh, Damascus uh, and uh, how they look like today. So this change is very positive and it reflects positively on their work, on their attitude, on uh, their talk. Um, I always say that uh, we need uh, to uh, look at the bright side. Uh, we have uh, to focus um, on uh, those um, examples. Um, it's true that many could be uh, that many are depressed many sleep until noon but um, this is not a solution when they first uh, when they first came many were depressed i knew many many um, young persons who were under shock but they needed to go out of the state of shock we are here this is an open country this is a country that is very encouraging they have um, freedom of speech they can talk uh, they can write uh, they can and uh, they can contribute um, into dialogue um, here, of course, um, they are um, in a better condition and they have to use this opportunity. They cannot, of course, uh, use the elevator to go on top of their um, reputation. They have to um, climb their reputation um, step by step. Mrs. Hanan, out of your experience and during um, So the question I would like to ask you is the following. So um, do you believe that what happened during the civil war in Lebanon applies as well? The answer. If you are to go into um, political analysis, I believe that there is a very different um, um, understanding um, um, of the situation. For example, during the Lebanese Civil War, we had um, uh, we had war with Israel, and um, we had, of course, the Syrian army that was present, uh, that was called for by the Lebanese um, uh, authorities, and um, we could see that we had the Israeli enemy, and we had as well a cause that were almost obvious so in the civil war we had um, the right and the left we had um, a very rejectionist um, approach and we had a very progressive um, approach we had um, the israeli enemy we had uh, the palestinian ally many wanted to go back to their phoenician roots and others believed uh, that the roots were arabs this is why beirut um, was divided uh, from the south till the north it was divided into um, east and west beirut Irrespective of uh, the internal circumstances, where um, at one point um, we had problems between Christians and Muslims, but nevertheless uh, there was this demarcation line, this line of demarcation between East and West. And um, contrary to what happened in Syria, we had migration going from the south, and that has accumulated um, in uh, the capital. In Syria, of course, the migration started uh, from the center, from the capital to abroad. And we had, of course, a crisis of identity. This crisis of identity that is based um, on uh, the cultural diversity. For example, we could see um, the way they dress. For example, the Kurds um, or those who would leave uh, refugee camps in Chitila or in Jordan. So if we all want to be globalized into one shape, we will lose in terms of diversity. And now this uh, cultural diversity has become a uh, one title towards conflicts. We have uh, five curriculums in Syria. We have uh, the Kurdish, we have the uh, Turkish, we have the official curriculum, and um, we had five curriculums. And we have um, uh, some who are um, and this is, of course, um, this is 
insane. What I would like to say is that there is, not a, there is no cause. Now, the Syrian people had a cause that would unify the ranks and they have made him become a victim. So, whereas in Lebanon, there was still a cause until the last minute. A question addressed to Mr. Hannibal and to Mr. Samer. How will this affect um, our culture and our identity in the future? This disintegration. We have uh, refugees, we have migrants, we have displaced, we have one and many curriculums. How will this affect our culture and our identity in the future? The answer. This is why I tried uh, to do in the uh, Jazz Lives Festival. Of course, uh, Syria is uh, very rich in terms of diversity. Um, Americans can pride themselves of uh, having different religions, uh, different um, races, but I believe uh, that what's important in our region is this diversity. It's part of, our, of who we are, it's part of our education. And I have tried by means of the music, by means of the festival, um, to show this um, wealth um, in Syria and uh, to um, involve the whole region in our wealth uh, to have the um, the Assyrians, to have the Syrians, to have the Muslims, um, all those um, perspectives um, be broadcasted and be um, examined. So it's um, a unified identity. This is what we are working on. So to have diversity in terms of networking. It is as well part of the music. When we were touring in Europe, the more it would be uh, specific, the more we would understand what's going on. But emotions travel around. It's not only uh, tongues and languages, but emotions as well travel around. And anyone could attend, for example, a festival, uh, an Iranian festival um, or an Indian festival where words um, are uh, not understood. But this, of course, will contribute um, to um, a better or a more brightened identity and we are working for human rights. Yes, good evening. My name is um, Abdel Al Kifri from Intijahat al Sakafi al Mustafali from Independent um, Cultural Dimensions. I have um, uh, to thank Shad for the initiative. It's a very interesting um, initiative. And I do hope that it will um, be a sustainable initiative. It would be very important, of course, um, to um, share it around. Uh, it's very important, and I do hope that a similar dialogue will be uh, a cornerstone th that we will build on for future um, dialogues, or maybe we can go deeper in our discussions um, in order to understand um, to what extent we can protect uh, the Syrian culture and to go deeper into many details, to go out of programs and activities, and to better discuss um, uh, politics, especially when it comes uh, to cultures. I would like as well to build on what was said by Hanan and uh, Mrs. Raghad um, for two main reasons that are related uh, to the presence of Syrian artists today. I will not only talk about the Syrian artists in Lebanon, but um, everywhere. We have, of course, uh, those uh, challenges that are related uh, to many elements. So the question is, can Syrian artists uh, carry on in the art, or will they have uh, to um, let go because um, they understand uh, the extent to which it's difficult uh, to continue producing art in the absence of uh, a challenge uh, of channels that could um, contribute to the promotion of the work? Um, and uh, the question is, uh, to what extent is this art artists playing um, a role, those who are um, producing a painting or those who are writing a book um, have their own activities that are related uh, to uh, the um, piece of art um, uh, he or she are, uh, is producing, but this is of course related uh, to culture, to the role of culture. Now it's very clear that no one and um, no one among all the relevant authorities are even talking about culture, so culture ha uh, is not part of any plan of action. Um, before any authority that is uh, offering itself uh, to be an alternative. It's only examined um, to the extent uh, that it is uh, used um, uh, to know whether or not uh, the situation is positive 
or negative. So today we have a question related to the role. How can we support the role of Syrian artists as well as the cultural um, dimension? And uh, the past three years have taught us that we cannot only talk about um, art or those who are working in culture because what Hanan was talking about, those persons who are working um, in um, in the camps means that we did not understand our societies or maybe were not very clear as uh, to um, the um, persons that we needed to work with them or as to the audience that we need to address. But nevertheless, we still have uh, many challenges in terms of building capacities of artists. We uh, need as well to understand um, this um, cultural activity and we have as well to understand the support that is given to those initiatives um, that may go depleted if they are not uh, given um, the proper circumstances. Um, many are uh, going um, towards um, having pilot activities. Um, uh, if, um, for example, today's initiative is only targeting 100 or 200 persons, uh, nevertheless, it needs to be supported in order to work um, with all artists, with the line of thinking of artists, and this is only possible by means of supporting uh, initiatives and activities either to have a Syrian um, artist, be it in Lebanon, in Syria, in Jordan, or elsewhere, be actually a lobby that could exert pressure because we are running out of time maybe we can give the floor to mrs sana good evening my name is sana yazaji i come from syria i have graduated uh, from graphic designs and and um, beaux-arts i wanted to ask um, our dear participants what they think uh, about the change um, what is the change that has occurred um, to the product of syrian artists and what has motivated this change yeah, maybe we can call it a revolution war a crisis it's not a matter of uh, personal changes for example losing a parent um, it's something that goes deeper When we talk about culture, it's something very important. Culture is not a product. This is why I would have wanted you to know, according to you, to what extent that this culture has changed. Because culture is defined to the extent uh, that this person is engaging in a relationship uh, with the community or with himself. This is what has changed. So I'm not sure or I do not know how we can talk about this change we cannot only talk about the music and to what extent is the product of a syrian um artists that are uh, close or um to what extent uh, they assimilate uh, with um, the um with the uh, community or to what extent uh, they are tasting this piece of art uh, called um martyr so we need to understand uh, this element and uh, we need uh, to know to what extent uh, the Syrian um, artist is actually interacting uh, with um, the public cause or with the public uh, circumstances. Maybe you could uh, share with us a few thoughts. Thank you for your question, Mrs. Sana. Because we are running out of time, I would ask uh, our panelists to answer this or these questions to conclude our official discussion after the very limited um, time frame we can sit we can talk and we can have um, a, an in-depth dialogue so maybe you can have uh, your ideas or your concluding remarks and since uh, it's a concluding remark then i would like to thank you very much for your attendance um, so what uh, mr abdullah is saying is very important it's um, a starting point um, by the end of the day, Sana, we have coordination, but we have little support. Others not only are faced with problems, but those who are working in culture are as well faced with problems, such as myself. We have uh, personal problems, and we have um, gone through a very difficult experience, um, and we're not complaining. But one can do what one can do. So first, we have to start with cultural policies. We need to have experiences um, and um, we need to have um, parties who support us 
if we have a similar dialogue in this case of course we can better work we can have better harmony between the different um, parties and this is something very interesting and um, uh, by the end of the day, I have to do something that looks like me. I look for harmonization, I look for integration. I am not sure what every person needs to do, but I believe that by the end of the day, we should look for um, a comprehensive um, identity, um, a harmonious um, identity that is similar to the project I had undertaken in Syria. So I tried as much as possible to find um, an element. Um, so here, of course, um, we have those elements in the social media, and um, I try, of course, uh, to find a common ground between all those elements as per the activities that are I am undertaking. This is uh, my point of view. Yes, thank you. Regarding what has changed in terms of culture, well, it's true that many have changed. Our looks have changed, our life has changed, our culture has changed as well. But I cannot um, tell you to what extent culture has changed because uh, this uh, can only show in a couple of years. Uh, we can uh, um, have, um, uh, uh, we can look backward and understand to what extent our culture has changed. So today um, we have changed compared with last week, and next week we will be different as well. So this is um, this is how culture changes. When you work um, on uh, current uh, situations, and I believe that um, a simple citizen, it is true that uh, the workshops um, or the um, plays that, that are um, taking place produce something, but the last thing would be t is uh, to um, stop and look at uh, the uh, painting of uh, the martyr. But uh, the graffiti on the walls uh, has its own public, and those who are looking at the painting of the martyr have uh, are different so every painting has its own public has its own audience um, we cannot have people read everything look at everything listen to everything we need time in order to work all together and to work on all levels every person needs to focus on his own um, um, activity and then days will come where we can see what is the trend? Where is the harmony? Where is the difference? And before I conclude, there is a very brief remark. And I can tell you about um, my field of expertise. It's true that we have uh, confessional um, and uh, religious differences that have um, surfaced. Um, but nevertheless, we, as artists, work together continue or pursue our dialogue and uh, so far and despite um, all political tendencies um, we are still working together so the last exhibition uh, I had uh, was um, had um, uh, was titled the last supper which is a very religious title it um, included uh, over 50 artists from both sides we had uh, uh, persons from both sides who were exhibiting their uh, work together and uh, those who were um, exhibiting of course uh, were from different religious religions but we're all working together we have uh, contributed to this um, development but of course it will take years before historians will come and look back at us and will say this is how you look thank you very much for this undertaking because it's the first time that we have um, a dialogue that is not confrontational in order to uh, work together and be together. Mrs. Hanan, please be very brief. I do not know to what extent we can be very brief um, in answering questions that uh, deserves many meetings. We will not define um, uh, culture because it is a matter of, um, uh, the, um, of, it's a matter of heritage. Um, and I believe that cultural is now the culture of the crisis. Um, and you have uh, mentioned the graffiti. Now, we have uh, many um, pieces of work and we have uh, many activities that have not been criticized um, correctly. And uh, we have many productions, in addition, of course, uh, to the classic channels that um, you have been talking about. So, 
to what extent we can have um, platforms of partnership um, is a difficult question. It's a matter of uh, practice. It's not the first time that um, we discuss those matters. We had uh, many Syrian uh, meetings, and um, there are many things that we do not know of. Uh, what we need is actually to map around and to examine the culture map that is well dispersed today in order to have a very clear plan of action so that we do not duplicate um, and we can build on what we have accomplished so far. Now, uh, as for the change, we have uh, many changes that have occurred. Um, I can give you a very specific example. For example, the play Ma'am um, Zakar. I cannot remember by Wael Ali, who sat with Sajan Abdul Rahman, a former inmate. He spent with him a year or a year and a half. They have. Um, um, they had the audio and the TV recordings, and when they when they produced before the people, Hassan was here in order to see the production and um, Hassan while Ayham was playing his role he would comment on what he said the first the second times and he would can uh, he would criticize himself um, and he had of course um, a memory that was um, a brief memory and now he was uh, looking at the image from a different perspective from a different angle so this product that is a cultural product um, and uh, that is um, the one who has right to production uh, to expressing this uh, production, how he uh, now wishes to express himself, to build on his experience, um, and uh, to share his experience with others, and to what extent he wishes uh, uh, to have a critical perspective that would go beyond um, the uh, senses of uh, media uh, commentators. So um, this is all I wanted to say in order to give you a very brief um, example and tangible example. Thank you. Thank you very much. I would like to thank the audience. Um, I would like to thank the panelists.